What's up everyone, Kevin here. Today I'm going to talk to you about the differences between aeration and cavitation. So there's been some confusion in the past on the differences between cavitation and aeration. They've been kind of confused as being the same thing, which they are not. So basically what cavitation is, is it primarily happens on the suction side of a fuel pump. So it's whenever the fuel pump is demanding more fuel than what the fuel line can supply. So when you hear your pump being really loud on the suction side, it's sometimes it could be due to improper sizing a fuel line or a restriction on the suction side, and that would cause basically gaseous bubbles to form in that vacuum and once they're repressurized they implode which can actually erode metal. Our fuel pumps actually separate out the aeration not the cavitation. Okay so we paused the video here we just wanted to reiterate the fact that cavitation happens on the suction side of the pump and cannot happen on the pressure side of the pump so there's no need to separate out quote unquote cavitation because it's not a thing on that side of the pump and let me talk about what aeration is. So aeration is basically what you see here. Is basically from high flow returns, engine returns, going into the, the fuel tank and aerating the fuel, sloshing, and you can see all these bubbles that's now entrained in the fuel. So now if you come over here to the suction side of the pump, you can see that that aeration is being picked up and sent to the suction side of the pump and that's actually what we are separating out. That's the main differences of, of those two. And that's why our AirDog 2s are so nice because of the demand flow that we offer. What's being returned back to the tank is this trickle right here versus our competitor pump or even our own AirDog 1. This is what you're seeing returned back to the tank at basically idle is all this fuel aerating everything in your tank. Aeration can even happen in a factory fuel module in a low fuel situation because when fuel and everything is returned back to your tank it's not returned to the outside of the fuel module it's returned to the inside of the fuel module to help keep that basket full so you don't ha run into any suction issues in a factory system but when it's returned back to that module it can actually aerate that fuel so in a low tank situation you can still have aerated fuel even in a factory or aftermarket drop-in module now that we know about aeration, I want to talk to you why it's so important to actually remove all this entrained air like we do on the AirDog 2 and AirDog 1 systems. Basically, there's a unitless measurement called bulk modulus. Bulk modulus is the measurement of the compressibility of a liquid. So just a 1% volume of air in the fuel can reduce that compressibility by 55%. So us removing that allows for a solid column of fuel to protect the life of your injection system. Because if you have all this air in there, 55% more compressibility, you can have metal-to-metal -metal contact between um, your injection pump, between your injector tips, and it can cause damage over time. So something like an air dog is a very good investment for the life of your injection system. Our air dog twos are so effective at removing air, you could even, at a low tank situation, if you, if you have a fuel slosh, see all that air that just went in there? you're still going to see nothing but pure fuel going to your injection system and all that aerated fuel is returned and you can see the m more air here being returned back to the tank. So if you guys like this content, like and subscribe on YouTube, and then go ahead and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you guys for watching.